Okay, hi Year 9. Uh, my name is Mr Boothroyd. I work in the Design Technology Department and I am going to be telling you about the engineering qualification that you can study in years 10 and 11. Um, the first thing to say about this is that it is not a GCSE, it's a level 2 qualification. Um, but that is the equivalent of um, GCSE, so I'll talk about the grades in a minute. Um, the first thing to say about this course is that it's made up of three components and you have to pass each of those components. So you can see there on screen we've got engineering uh, design, producing engineering products and solving engineering problems. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk to you a little bit about how that course is made up um, uh, and basically what you're going to be doing <coughs> in engineering. So firstly, you've got unit one, which is engineering design. That is 25% of your overall mark. And that is a drawing task as well. So you are given uh, a brief. You've got to redesign a mobile phone charger. It can be whatever you want it to be. So there's quite a bit of drawing involved in that. That's quarter of the overall mark as well. And that's actually done in school and it's marked by myself as well. And then I submit your grades to the moderator. Um, so for that, you will be doing some drawings. You can develop your drawing skills uh, and you will not have to make anything for that. You'll just have to do drawings for that. So that's unit one. Unit two is producing engineering products. And this is a piece of coursework that you will complete in year 11. You are given uh, drawings to produce. So you're giving drawings of an engineering product, a lamp in this case, and you will make that in school with my supervision. So that will be the final product as well. And that is half of the overall qualification. So that is a piece of practical work that you do in school. Finally, we've got 25% of your overall mark is solving engineering problems. That is an exam that you will take in the summer of year 11. And we'll do lots of preparation for that. It's only an hour, hour and a half exam. It's very, very standard format. So there's similar questions each year. Uh, and they're on a variety of things as well. So you might be given a product to analyze, you've got to say how the product's made, uh, what the materials are, and some of the functions of those parts of the product. You've also got to compare old and new products and you've got to do some technical drawing. And I'll talk about technical drawing in a minute. So that is the qualification itself. It's three units, you have to pass them all. And the grades are pass, merit, or distinction for those. So level two distinction is the top mark. That's the equivalent of an A at GCSE. Level two merit, that's the equivalent of a B. And a level two pass is the equivalent of a C. We've also got a level one pass. So if students do fail those, um, if they haven't done enough work, which is very, very rare, then you still get a level one pass. Um, but that is the equivalent of a D at GCSE as well. So we don't have any students on a level one pass. Uh, we're looking at distinctions, merit and pass as well. And there's a quote from one of my favourite uh, sports person. I'm a big tennis fan, actually. Uh, Roger Federer, one of the greatest tennis players of all time, still playing tennis, uh, had a 20-year career as well. He said, there's no way around the hard work, embrace it. And you are going to work hard in engineering as well. You're going to enjoy it, but you've got to embrace it. If you do that, you'll be really successful. Okay, I'm going to move on. So that's a little bit about the course itself. So again, just to reiterate, it's not a GCSE, it's a level two qualification. What do you get to make in engineering? So in year 10, we do loads of fun projects. You get to do loads of different things. Uh, we've got a bottle opener that we make out of metal. So you get marking out and making techniques. Uh, we do a kind of decorative uh, daffodil kind of copper um, a product as well that could feature, you know, could be sold onto a garden center um, and that's using different processes. Uh, we do CAD CAM as well. So we do computer aided design, computer aided manufacture. Uh, that's a project that we do, which is a headphone holder. That's from your own designs. A copper candle holder, which is one of the first things that you will make in year 10, one of our first projects. That's an introduction to different metals, properties of metals, cutting, shaping, filing, polishing, loads of different skills you're going to learn on that project. We've got mass production project. You work in teams. You've got to mass produce a walking owl toy. We also make ping pong ball holders. I provide you with the drawings and you work in teams to manufacture that and then you test it out. We also do jewellery as well. We do pewter casting as well, which is heating up pewter metal to be on its melting point, pouring it into a mold that you've created, 
polished, shaped, filed, buffed, lots of processes on that. It's a really fun project. The, there's some students that have just made their uh, ping pong ball launches as well. Those are my current year 11 students. You'll also get to take products apart and uh, learn how they work, what are the components, what are the manufacturing techniques, what are all the things that are inside a product, and that is called reverse engineering or disassembly. It's a really good way of working out how products are made and how they function. Also, there's some more examples of the coursework that you're going to produce. So those are lamps. And you can see that those are all the components. You make all the components and then you have to join them together following engineering drawings. So that's about some of the stuff we're going to be doing. That will give you the skills. So in year 11, when you come to make your coursework, you've got all the making skills. You've got the knowledge about the tools, materials, processes. You're very confident working independently and you're really good at uh, interpreting engineered drawings. So that's just some of the stuff we're going to be doing. Key skills. So what can you learn doing engineering? OK, loads of stuff. Practical mating, making skills, using tools and equipment in the workshop, get to re-familiarize yourself with the right tool for the right job. Technical drawing. So this forms one of the core parts of the course as well. You'll have to do this for your coursework, parts of your coursework in year 11. And it's also something that comes up in the engineering exam. You'll be expected to uh, do engineering drawing. And I'm going to set you some tasks to do in the lesson today as well, this taster lesson. And that will give you a flavor of the kind of things you will be doing. Obviously, you can't do any practical work, but we do do lots of practical work. 50% of our time is developing your practical knowledge and skills. But you've also got to do technical drawing as well. And I'll show you some examples of that. Orthographic, isometric, and some exploded views. Okay, what else? Computer-aided design. Modern engineers use computers a lot. We don't use them a lot, but we use them probably about 25% of our time. We're going to be developing your computer-aided design or your CAD skills using SketchUp and 2D design. Some of the stuff you probably used in year seven, eight, and nine, um, having done DT, we use this a lot as well. Interpreting engineered drawings to make a variety of projects. That's a really important skill because engineers have to be able to take a drawing that's been made for them and they have to make a product from that. And that's one of the key skills as well. And I will support you in the development of those skills. So, um, yeah, that is a, a really important part of the course. Solving engineering problems through written and drawing tasks. So just to remind you that 25% of your overall mark is a written exam paper and you will develop your core theory knowledge through doing uh, exam questions, practice papers um, and working on presentations in our lessons. So written and drawing tasks as well. So you get to develop your drawing. You can see an example there on screen. So you can be very creative in engineering as well. And finally, developing a knowledge of materials, manufacturing processes, and the impact of modern technologies. So those are all key skills that you're going to develop. But some of the other things that you're going to develop as well, teamwork, that's really important. Teamwork, if you go into employment, you'll always be asked, give an example of where you've worked as part of a team. So we have a couple of projects, one project where the whole class works together making something, and we have a couple of projects where you work in teams of two as well. Problem solving is a really good skill to have as well. And again, you know, when you're going into employment, you need to be able to have those skills. Independence. Don't always wait for the teacher to tell you how to do this. You will be working very independently on some of these projects. I will be giving you the drawings, the designs, and you will be working out what you need to do, what materials you need, and how you're going to make that product. And again, that quite a few of those projects are done in pairs as well. Communication, that is a really important skill. So these four that I've underlined are really important skills for you going on to employment as well, which is what I'm preparing you for, college, apprenticeship, A-levels or employment. But these are key skills. Okay, so that's what you're going to be learning. Let's have a look at some other stuff. Now, on any one project, you might be using a variety. There's 20 pieces of tools and equipment here. And this is what you'll be expected to gain a knowledge of, confidence in, and be able to use and know why you're using them. So again, I say using the right tool for the right job. So you can see some of those you may have had experience with uh, in DT, 
from year seven up to nine, but you will be expected to gain a lot of confidence with some of these tools and equipment. You've got to know the names of them because sometimes this comes up in exam. You've got to know why you're using them and you've got to know how to use them safely as well. So safety is something very, very important working in engineering in the workshop. And all of those tools and equipment, you might just be using on one simple project. So one of the things that we do is we make a, a bottle opener from aluminium, where you mark it out, you cut it, you shape it, you drill it, and all of the tools and equipment that you can see on screen are some of the things that you'll be expected to use or you will have to use um, on a lot of the projects. Not all of them are the same tools because obviously we have different projects and use different tools and equipment, but I would say those are the basic engineering tools and equipment that you will be using throughout your time doing engineering. Okay, here's an example of some drawings. And what's quite interesting to point out is that one of the students, probably one of my best students at drawing, started in year 10 and he used to say, I can't draw, I'm not very good at drawing, I'm not very confident, but we'll develop those skills as well. But that's the kind of standard that I expect and that is year 11 coursework. So all of those drawings are, you know, students, probably I'd say 50% of those students work there started off with, you know, low confidence when it came to drawing. But again, that's something that we work on throughout years 10 and 11, developing your drawing skill and style so that you feel confident, you can work to a very high standard and that you can communicate your ideas. And remember that is for piece of coursework that's worth 25% of the overall mark. You are given a mobile phone charger, well, you're not given one, you're given a brief, you've got to redesign a mobile phone charger. And again, it can be anything you want, providing that it charges mobile phones or it might, might charge multiple devices. So there's quarter of the qualification is designing as well, is coming up with design ideas. You're given a specific thing to work to, specific brief, and you're expected to be able to communicate your ideas through written drawings and also computer-aided design as well to produce a final idea. Okay, we're going to move on. So you'll also be expected to evaluate design ideas as well. One of the things that you need to be able to do in engineering is, and again, I'll just remind you that it's not all practical work. 50% of the time we do practical work, but we've also got to work on exam questions. And you've also got to be able to create PowerPoint presentations as well to represent your work. This is a piece of coursework that is produced in year 11. So as well as designing, coming up with designs for mobile phone chargers and mind mapping and brainstorming ideas, you've also got to be able to evaluate your design ideas and choose one and you've got to explain why that's the best idea. So this is student's work from year 11. This student actually got a distinction for his coursework and he's currently on my A-level course in year 12 doing design technology. Okay, here's, I'm gonna set you a couple of tasks now actually. Um, one of the first things that really you need to get used to is working safely in the workshop environment as well. Um, obviously, you know, we can't have any kind of risky behavior. We've got to get used to working maturely in a workshop environment. Your experience of DT has probably been with a larger group of students as well. Engineering, we usually have about 15 students. And as I say, one of the things that I'd say to you is that you will be working very, very independently. My expectations are, I will give you lots of support and help. I will show you the way to do these things and give you guidance. But I expect you as you develop your confidence that you're going to work independently. You're going to choose for the projects you're working on, which machine do I need to use next? What tools and equipment do I need to choose to do the task? And again, you will be working independently on that under my supervision. So I'm going to set you a couple of tasks as well to give you a flavor of what you're going to be doing in engineering. So I'm going to get, expect you to do this uh, during this lesson or this taster session that we're doing or that you're watching and PPE is something that we've grown very used to as well because we're always wearing masks when we're out in public on public transport as a member of staff I have to wear a mask when I'm in school um, so again PPE personal protective equipment is something that we've got quite used to so I'm going to set you a little challenge here and I'm going to give you some time to do the work before I reveal the answers to you so this is very, very important in the DT workshop as well. And we're using tools and equipment because what we want to do is we want to follow safety instructions. So we reduce the risk of any kind of accident. So what PPE would you use for the following hazards? So I'm going to give you a little bit of thinking time 
And what you can do is if you've got a book or you can make some notes there, I'm going to expect you to write that down. I'll give you a little bit of time for this activity. And then what we'll do is we'll come together uh, and we'll just check the answers. So the first thing I'm going to say, what protective equipment would you use um, to protect your ears from loud noises? So what would you use to protect yourself? What safety equipment or what PPE would you be using? And bearing in mind, this might be in uh, a DT workshop or it might be in, in industry where you're working in a factory or a workplace where there are lots of loud noises. Okay, so I'm going to get, uh, get you to think about that. So I want you to write the answer down or at least think about it. Okay, yeah. So ear defenders um, or foam bits that you, you know, the foam things that you put into your ears to protect yourself from those noises. That's an expectation to protect your hearing as well. And your employer or school would provide you with these things. Fortunately, in the DT workshop doing engineering, we never have anything that's making a very, very loud noise. So it's unlikely that you'd need those things. All right, let's have a look at something else. Give you another task here. Get ready to think about this or write it down. So the hazard is the impact from falling objects, risk of bumping your head or getting your hair entangled on a piece of machinery or equipment. So what would you use to protect yourself from that? So either write the answer down or have a think about it and I'll give you some time to do that. Okay, let's go through the answer together. So what would you use? What piece of uh, personal protective equipment, what would you be wearing to protect yourself from those possible hazards? Um, yeah, so safety helmet. You often see those with people on building sites or working in construction or in certain industries as well. They're lightweight, but that's gonna stop you you're bashing your head on something. And again, it's not something that we really need to consider in the DT workshop, but we do need to bear in mind um, that hair entanglement. So if you've got long hair and you're using something like the pillar drill or the belt sander, uh, there would be a risk of you getting your hair entangled, but by wearing something like that or having your hair tied back, you are gonna reduce the risk of any kind of accident. All right, good. So let's move on to another one, see how you get on with this. Right, so the hazard is dust, vapour or gas. What would you be wearing to protect yourself from those hazards? So what would you use to stop yourself breathing something in, uh, a gas or a vapour, or to stop inhaling dust? Okay, so what is the purse, piece of personal protective equipment that you're going to use on this occasion? And I'm going to give you some time to answer that. So you can either write this down or you can just think about it. So what would it be? Yep, okay, so we've got a mask, which obviously we're very familiar with at the moment because lots of us are wearing masks. And you've also got something that looks a bit like a gas mask, so a kind of breathing, uh, a breathing mask there as well, which again, you're gonna use and that's gonna stop you from breathing in. If you're in that kind of situation or you're kind of working in industry or you're working somewhere where there is a risk or those present you with the hazards, that's what you would be expected to wear. All right, let's move on to the next one. So we're doing pretty well. So the hazard is abrasion, temperature, extremes or cuts. And that could be to part of your body, it could be to your hands. So how would you protect yourself from something like that? Abrasion means kind of damaging your skin. Temperature could be something that's very, very hot and you have to handle it. Extremes means it could actually be something very, very cold as well. So it's something really cold. So some uh, chemicals, for example, that you have to handle are extremely cold. And also cuts. So how would you present yourself from, prevent yourself from, uh, from that hazard? I'll give you a little bit of thinking time or you can write the answer down. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. So you're going to be wearing gloves, safety gloves. Again, we don't really wear these a lot in DT, but we do if we're doing soldering or, you know, we're using the blowtorch, which we can't quite often do with some of the metal projects, metal work projects, um, then you might be wearing gloves as well to protect yourself from those hazards. Okay, finally, let's have a look before we move on to the next task. And again, just to remind you, these are some of the things that, firstly, you'll be expected to use PPE in the workshop and know how to behave and how to use the tools, equipment, machines safely. 
reducing down any hazards but also this is something that sometimes comes up in exams where you might have to carry out a risk assessment or you'd have to say how you what you would use to what you would wear to reduce the risk of having some kind of accident or injury okay so the impact from flying object so if something comes flying off something if you're drilling using a pillar drill and you don't hold the workpiece or whatever it is you're drilling into there's a possibility that it may come loose and it may go flying across the workshop if that does what would you wear to protect yourself from that and if you think about this question if something's flying towards you if it hits your body that's probably not too bad if it hits your face then actually that could be quite bad and if it hits a particular part of your face what would you need to do to protect yourself from that again write the answer down or think about it and then we'll check in see how you did Okay, and the answer is safety goggles. So you would be wearing safety goggles to protect yourself. So whenever you're using uh, some of the machinery, fixed machinery in the workshop when we're doing engineering, it could be the pillar drill, it could be the buffing machine, it could be the belt sander, you would be protecting your eyes at all times in case something did come flying off there as well. All right, so that's about personal protective equipment and that's some of the, you know, some of the considerations that we have to think about. And again, you'd be expected to know this stuff as well. Obviously, as we go on with the course and we develop this, you'll have a knowledge of what uh, safety equipment you would need to wear or use and how you would use tools and equipment safely. And again, that's called a risk assessment. And risk assessment is something that schools and businesses and industries have to carry out to make sure that their em employees are protected. And we do that with students here as well. OK, let's move on. Let's have a look at another task. Okay, so this is an exam question as well. And you can see the question there, it's a four mark exam question. We're comparing old and new technology. So the world of engineering is greatly influenced by develop, developments in technology. One area that has seen many changes is the design and use of computers. And you can see we've got a very old computer there, probably something from the early 90s. And we've got a tablet device as well next to it. So the tablet device is the modern version of that. The tablet does everything that that computer does. But again, it's much smaller, much slimmer, much lighter, and probably more powerful as well. So your question, and you're not going to do this, I'm just introducing you to this task. The two images above are of a 1990s computer and a modern sneak tablet form of computer tablet describe the technological developments in its design that have enabled the computer to become smaller. So that is a typical exam question. And what is it asking you to do is think about how has technology improved the tablet? So what is it about the tablet that's much better now? What is it that's changed about the tablet? And that's a four mark exam question. Now we're gonna go through the answers on this and then I'm gonna set you a little challenge that you're gonna do in the lesson. So, the way that you would answer a question like this, and remember what it's asking you, describe the technological developments. So what you're doing is you're describing the way that the tablet is much better than the other, the old 90s computer. So we've got things like the uh, miniaturization of components, enabling compact design. So basically the components have got much smaller. So you could, everything that you've got on the hard drive and the screen and the keyboard, you've now got into one tablet. Developments with LED screen technology. So again, LED screens now, they're touch screens, they got much better, they're much clearer, higher resolution. Again, think about what people are using for now. You're accessing social media, you're probably watching uh, films or TV programs on those kind of platforms. So you want really good quality. Screens are becoming thinner. So that's another thing as well. The screens are becoming much thinner. It's much lighter and it's much slimmer. You've got new battery technologies. You've got reduced size, increased power. You've got longer battery life as well. The 1990s computer had to be plugged in. This now can be recharged, but it doesn't require any leads as well. Connectivity, so it's wireless. You can connect your wireless, your Wi-Fi. And improved reliability due to high technology manufacturing methods as well. So the standard of this product is much better as well in every respect. So you would mention two of those points to get your four marks as well. Or you can mention four marks 
four different points and get four marks of that. But you'd have to make sure that to get to mention two points, you'd fully explain. Two of the points fully explained will get you four marks. So that's a typical exam question, but I want you to have a go at one as well, or any other reasonable response. So here's what I want you to do is you can spend a few minutes and I'll give you some thinking time or you can write the answers down to this, make a note of the answers. So we've got a very old and a very new modern cordless hand drill there as well. They both, both perform the same function. They're both used for drilling, but one is much better and it's much different. So the old fashioned picture uh, represents a very, very old, very, you know, very old version of a drill. And the one next to it is a much more modern version, probably the ones that you recognize. So uh, use three examples to describe how modern technology has made the modern cordless drill safer to use as well. So how is it, how is it safer? Why is it better? So have a think about that. What are some of the things that you need to think about? So how is it safer? So think of three things that have made that product safer to use. You could even just think for this exercise, how are they better to use? How is it better to use that product? How is it easier to use? How is it more improved than using the old fashioned version? So I'm gonna give you a few minutes and then I'm gonna go through the answers with you. So remind you, just have a look at the images closely. Why is the modern one much better? What are the reasons? Why is it a better drill? So you've got to make three, three statements here, three different examples. Okay, let's go through them together. Remember, you can always pause this as well. So as you're watching this, you can always pause this if you need a little bit more time. But that's probably the amount of time you'd spend answering a question like this in the exam. So remember, it's a 90 minute exam and there's 60 marks. And this question is worth six of those marks. All right, so let's have a look at this together. So what are we saying? So, uh, we've got two images. And it's quite often two images, you've seen it. a similar question in another exam was about a modern tablet and an old computer, an older version. And you're saying, how has modern technology improved it? So what you could mention is you've got improved materials as well. So the cordless drill is plastic, it's lighter, it's more portable, it's easier to use. So the user gets less tired using it. So if you look at those materials, you can see that the uh, the old fashioned version is probably metal. It's probably quite heavy as well. So again, improved materials. That's how modern technology uh, has changed this. So they've improved, improved the materials. Let me just move that out of the way. So it's therefore it's lighter and more portable. So you've got to make the statement and you've got to say why or because. You've just got to explain your answer. So that's one. So we can look at the materials. They've improved. You've got a rechargeable battery as well on the new version. If you look at the old version, that is connected to the main, so that is plugged in. So the cordless drill is not mains operated, so has no training needs and can be used anywhere. This makes it safer to use as the user could trip over the lead. So remember, this is asking you to think about safety. Why is it safer to use? Okay, so those two, it's lighter, so you're not gonna get tired. And again, if it's lighter, if you dropped it, you know, you dropped it on your foot, it's not going to kind of damage your foot, where obviously the metal one, if you drop that on your foot, it probably would break your foot and you'd end up in casualty. Okay, so that's our other answer. And finally, we've got manufacturing methods as well. 
So the cordless drill is made of plastic and that's been injection molded. So injection molded is a process where you can make products very, very quickly from a mold. Lego is another example as well. Lego bricks are injection molded. It's a mass production technique as well. Think about how much Lego is manufactured each day. They've got machines, um, in Lego, the factory, has got machines that are working 24 hours a day to injection more parts. So it allows for a much more accurate product and it's also much more comfortable. I've used the word ergonomics there. It's been ergonomically designed to be comfortable, comfortable to hold. And again, comfort is something really important because if something isn't comfortable to hold, then it can be uncomfortable and you can start to have health problems because of that. So that's just a typical exam question. Remember that you know, the exam is 25% of your overall mark. Let's move on, let's look at something else. Okay, now this is, I'm gonna tell you about engineered drawings as well. This is kind of core, core part of engineering as well, is being able to look at engineering drawings and make a product from it. And in year 11, you'll have to do that with the exam board provide you with a drawing of a lamp with all the parts, all the components, and you have to be able to make that in the workshop. So engineering drawings, any engineer, if he's making something, uh, if he or she's making a product, they'll be given drawings or they'll draw something and they'll give it to somebody to make it as well. So you need to be able to understand if you're making something from those kind of drawings, you need to have as much information as possible. You'd have the dimensions or the sizes, you'd have details of components because somebody's gonna to need to buy or make those components for the product. The materials, what materials do you need to use? and assembly instructions, how to make it. So the, that is basically what an engineer drawing is. Orthographic projection is you simply take, a, you do a front view, a side view, and a plan view or a top view of a particular product. And we're gonna look at a picture of a really old fashioned TV there as well, probably something from about 15, maybe 20 years ago as well. And I'm gonna show you how you do an orthographic drawing of that. Simply put, an orthographic drawing is three 2D views, three flat views of a product, but it has to be accurate. So it's a way of turning 3D drawings into several 2D drawings, and I'll show you some examples. So if you drew it from the top and you were just doing it 2D, you didn't see any of the details, that's what the product would look like from the top, looking down as if you were above the TV, because it's quite large at the back because it's an old version. So another view would be looking at it from the front, like that. So straight on, if you just drew a 2D view, it would look like that. And then what you'll do is you'll add the side view as well. So the top, front and side views. And you'll notice something that all of those views line up and they're all the same size, meaning that if you drew that product and you wanted somebody to make it for you, you'd have to give them really ac a really accurate drawing. So all you're doing is really, you're looking at it from one view if you could turn the TV over, if it was in front of you, you could turn it and look at it from the side, and then you could turn it again and look at it from the top. So the views line up like that. So that's engineered drawing. Let's have another, a look at another example. Okay, so we've got a house there. We want to do an orthographic drawing of the house. So the plan view, which means the top view, would look like this. And again, it's just, although you've got a sloping roof, if you do a 2D view, you can't show that there's any slope, sloping angles on that at all. So it would look something like that. You've got a line or the ridge along the top of the roof and it was simply a 2D view. Now, you wouldn't know just from that if you were provided with that and you were making a house or you were making kind of small version of a house, a toy or something like that. You wouldn't know that the roof was sloping. So you'd have to give more information in the drawing, which would be looking at it from the front. So the front, it would probably have windows and doors and other features like that. But again, so now you're looking at it from the front and you can see that that includes the front of the house and it also includes the roof. But again, we can't tell from that that the, uh, the roof is actually sloping. So when we give another view like that, we can see that those are the three different views, the top, front, and the end view of that house. And remember the orthographic drawing, we just need to be able to do this. We need to be quite confident at it because it's something that we need to do in an exam. And it's also something that we need to do for a part of our coursework when you are designing a mobile phone charger. So it's very, very straightforward. I don't want anybody to be intimidated or put off by this, but it is something that you will learn and develop. And really the kind of drawing that you're doing will be a bit more complicated than that, but it's using the same principles. So you are simply doing three flat 2D views of a 3D product. 
Okay, let's have a look at, I'm going to give you a challenge to do. See if you can have a go at this next task. Now that object there, it might be an engine part or something like that, or it might be an interior part of a product. What I want to know is, what would it look like if you were drawing it from the top, the plan view? So if you're looking straight down, what would you include on that drawing? So if you've got a piece of paper or you've got line paper or something in front of you, have a go, bearing in mind what we've just looked at, let's just go back to that slide, bearing in mind what the different views, the different flat 2D views are. So let's go back, or forward I should say. Right, so sketch out what you think the top view, looking down at that from above would look like. I'm gonna give you a minute to do that. So just quickly sketch that. Look at the shape, what information Again, you can't, give a, you can't show in your drawing that that's got a sloping angle on it. You've just got to do the version from above, the top view. That's a flat 2D drawing. Okay, right, I'm gonna reveal the answer as well. So it would look like this, oh, sorry. Actually, what I was going to say is you've got to do the front and the end view. So let's have a look at the, so the top view. So let's do that first of all. So it would look like that. So if you looked at that product from the top, you've got the long bit there as well. And then you've got the sloping side. But on your drawing, you can't indicate that in any way that that's sloping. You've got to do that on a different version. Okay, so that's what it looks like from the top. And again, you get lots of practice this in engineering. Um, probably drawing, technical drawing is probably about... 25% of our time is spent doing that. Okay, so what would it look like if you look at the arrows from the front, you're looking at it directly front on, what would that look like? And again, you've just got to do a simple 2D view. So have a go at that. And try and line it up as well. Remember that it's got to sort of line up underneath the top view, the plan view. But again, just have a go at it. So what information can you include and what information do you need to leave out? It has to be just a 2D view. Can't be 3D or have any other information on it. A flat 2D view from the front. Using very, very few lines. Okay, I'm going to show you the answer, but again, you can always pause this if you're still working. Simply looking at it from the front is that view there as well. And look how it lines up with the view above it as well. Because if you look at that object, you simply turn it over for each different view. It doesn't change in size or appearance. It's exactly the same size. A product looked at from a different angle doesn't suddenly double in size or half the size. It's exactly the same. So that's the front view. Very, very simple, very straightforward. As you can see, when you learn how to do this uh, and you learn all the skills, it's actually quite straightforward. And finally, I want you to do the last one. I want you to do the end view. So what does it look like looking at it from the end? You can see that the L part or the L shape is shaded in. So you could start with that. But what else do you need to include on this? Because this is the view where you're going to show that it's actually got a sloping side. So have a go at that. And I'm going to wait for you. <clears throat> or again, you can pause this. So think carefully what information do you need to include and what do you leave, need to leave out? What can't you include on there? We don't need any shading or color. It is simply a line drawing, a 2D view. Okay, I'm gonna reveal the answer. So looking at it from the end, it would look like this. And that is where you give the information that part of it has got a sloping side. So that's actually, if you look at it, that's probably a slightly easier version because that looks 
uh, that's probably closer to the product, the way that you're looking at it, than the other two. So that is simply orthographic drawing. And as I say, it comes up in exams. You have to do some of it in your 11th year coursework. And again, I'm going to give you drawings of product with sizes and dimensions, and you're going to make them as well, obviously with lots of help from me. But again, you will eventually develop to work, you know, you will develop the skills of working really independently as well. So you can interpret the drawing, you know how to make it, you know, the tools, equipment, materials that are needed for that as well. So that's orthographic drawing. Okay, so I just want to summarize. So well done, everyone. I just want to summarize what engineering is. First of all, it's an engaging and stimulating subject where you learn a combination of practical problem solving skills, working with a variety of materials, processes, tools, and equipment. So as I said, about 50% of our time, 50% of our lessons, we're doing practical work, doing practical projects. So through hard work, you will develop the skills needed to progress onto A-levels, college, apprenticeship, or employment. If you go into employment, again, an engineering qualification, you can go into engineering, you can go into the trade industries like plumbing, electrician, carpentry, um, work, you know, working in those kind of industries. A-levels, you can go into do design technology, product design, engineering, studying some of those things at college. Or again, you may go into an apprenticeship and learn a trade through your engineering qualification. So that's what it is. I've just given you a very, very quick flavor of it. You can always ask questions, you know, with your DT teachers. So that's what engineering is. But engineering is not, and this is really important because remember, if you're choosing this subject, you're going to be doing it for two years. It's probably going to lead on to A-levels or college or apprenticeship or employment. So it might even be something that you're doing uh, as a career and possibly for the rest of your working life. So here's what it's not. It's not woodwork. There's no requirement to do any kind of woodwork in engineering. We're working with metals, plastics, electronics, um, other different materials, learning lots of different skills, but we're not doing woodwork as well. And it's not just practical work. So think really carefully. If that's what you think engineering is, it's not. So there's no point taking it because you are going to be doing written work, you're going to be doing drawing, and you're going to be doing practical work, that combination to give you this qualification. Finally, if you want to know more, you can speak to me or any of your DT teachers as well. So that was just a kind of uh, whistle-stop guide to engineering. If you need to know anything else, as I say, you can always speak to your teachers um, or you can email me, Mr. Boothroyd at the school, uh, and I'd be very happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, I uh, really hope to see some of you in next year in year 10 doing engineering. All the best. <laughs>